guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called What's for Dinner by A La Carte Games. It's a palate cleansing game for two to six players. It takes about a half an hour to play, and for ages probably 11 and up. In the game What's for Dinner, you're going to be trying to figure out what for di what's for dinner. And by doing that, you're going to be selecting certain cards that are going to enable you into eating certain types of foods. Maybe you're going to be vegan for this game. Maybe you're going to be a meat eater or something in between there. Maybe you'll have certain allergies. That's going to be up for you to decide based on what the different options you have in front of you at the beginning of the game on. One will be face down, one will be face up, and you're also going to have some cash, and that cash will allow you to buy food or do specific abilities like these guys here. You're going to have a food pyramid on the ground or on the table as well, which will allow you to A, roll a die and claim the uh, appropriate die based on, appropriate food based on what you roll, or simply buy that food from the food pyramid. If you don't want to do that, you can get rid of one of the food pyramid cards and replace it with a new one, and then you'll get to draw a card that could give you some money for next time. Your objective of the game is to collect all the specific food for your objectives as well as all of the uh, money values on these foods because that's what's going to determine the uh, money value not money value but the point value on this side of the card here which will determine whether you're winning the game or not the cards you have face down their secret objectives are worth certain amount of points and the cards that are face up are as well all right let's go ahead and share what the game looks like so here we have what's for dinner a palette cleansing card game for two to six players now not only is this a box for the game but also it comes with a cute little garbage can for when you get rid of cards from the food pyramid each player is going to get three types of objective cards cards and three types of money and or action cards and the last player is going to get an addition one of these action slash money cards the first player is going to get that food tray and then you're going to have a die for the game which will be rolling through your turn these cards are basically baconizing your food which is bad for your opponents because when you place it on a card it restricts their ability to buy the food as well as to acquire it through rolling a die the only way you can get it is by rolling bacon uh, you're going to have a set deck where all you can get these different actions all the different money you're also going to have the set objective cards so you can go ahead and uh, choose from through the beginning of the game and then of course your food pyramid stack each player to begin uh, the setup for the game is going to look at these three cards choose two of them get rid of one of them and place one of the cards they have chosen face up and one of the cards they have chosen face down. The card they have chosen face up is going to be worth double points, provided they're able to gain it at the end of the game. If they're not the one who acquire, who has that specific uh, goal, they're not going to get the points. So it's very important they make sure to choose really specifically as to what they want. This one here says no grain, so he's not going to be eating grain. And if he does, he doesn't get those points. And this one here says total highest quality of meat and grain icons among all other players. If he has that, he'll get six points. The secret hidden objective ones are down here. This one says last uh, acquired meal cards. Okay. Or least acquired meal cards. So if he has the least amount of meal cards, he's going to score points there. And this guy over here is actually an interesting one. It says it must be a visible trait. If it's not, it's not going to do anything. But at the end of the game, uh, actually, no, it has to be visible, period. Uh, it says uh, choose uh, any one trait card not in play and reveal it as a hidden trait. That happens at the end of the game before the traits are revealed. So that's pretty cool. So it has some specific different types of things like that. But after somebody is chosen, so we'll have this one face down, this one face up, chosen like that, remove the other ones here. You'll have your four cards and three cards, four for the last, three for the first. The game is then ready to begin. Make sure you have everything shuffled as well. All right, let's talk about how to play. So in the game, the first player is going to start off by rolling this die. After that, they can choose one of two actions. They can choose to purchase a food card or acquire it via the roll that they get. So if there's a strawberry type card and they roll strawberry, they can go ahead and pick that card up. If they don't want any of the cards they roll based on this die, they can then just pay for it for the money they have in their hand, if they have any. Their other action would then be instead of buying or picking up a card, be to discard a card from the food pyramid, put a new one down from the top of the pyramid, and then you'll get to draw one of these money symbols. After that, your turn is over, then you pass it to the next player. Your objective is to acquire all the different types of foods that you can, as well as accomplishing the objectives that you have set up for yourself visibly and invisibly. At the end of the game, which is basically when the food pyramid runs out, then there's just one more turn up until the first player, uh, you're going to count up all of the points that all of the cards are worth, as well as all of the points that are visible for you and invisible. The visible cards are worth double, and the invisible ones, hidden ones, are worth just what they're worth. Let's go ahead and show you how to play the game. So we're back to the game now. I went ahead and switched this one up for a more simplistic version of uh, explanation. This one just says you need to have the highest money total listed on all of your 15 and 20s. So he wants the most 15 and 20s he can get without um, anybody else going over that. Because if he does, he'll get 3 plus 3 more points. This guy over here, he just wants the highest quantity of meat and grain cards. If he can do that, he'll score his six points. And of course, they have their hidden goals that nobody gets to know about, the least acquired meal cards, and then no grains. 
Uh, so the first player will go ahead and start. This guy has the tray. He's got his three cards as opposed to four, so he's going to go ahead and roll the die. Bacon is a wild, which means he can pick up what he wants. And if not, if you rolled something else, like uh, cheese or grain or meat, vegetables, uh, etc., fruit, then you'll pick up the card based on the ones that are highlighted. If there's no one, none of them that are highlighted, you can't pick it up. So with Bacon, which is awesome, I'm going to go ahead and pick up this one here because he wants 15s and 20s, right? And that's going to be four points at the end of the game. So he'll just go ahead and put that wherever he wants in front of him. And and then a new card from the pyramid is going to drop down. That's what he chose to do on his turn, so the next player is going to get to go. Simply roll the die here. He's got cheese, so he can't actually pick up any of the cards here because cheese is not uh, visible, uh, unfortunately, for him. But he's got money, so if he wants, uh, he's going for the highest total meat and uh, grain. He'll take, the, he'll spend $10, and he'll collect that seafood California roll, discarding this one here. So it's perfect that he got that extra card there. That's going to help him out. Back to the next player's turn here. Yeah! Oh, don't forget to put the card there. Uh, bacon again. Ooh, bacon is so solid. Check out this card here. This one says that you can discard it anytime, roll the food die, and acquire a meal card that matches the result. So if you don't want this one here, you can go ahead and pick up something else. But he does, because it's worth 15, so that's pretty solid for him. Another card's going to come out, and you're going to keep rolling the die. This guy got bacon for once now, too. And what else does he have here? He can actually choose to re-roll the food die if he wanted, so if he didn't get bacon, he could have chosen to do that. And this guy over here has got a play before another player rolls. He can, make, he can shuffle the pyramid up. Um, roll, re roll the food die. So, a bunch of different little actions he can do. But, bacon again, what does he want? Let's look. He wants meat. He can choose to take this one, but it's worth one point uh, less at the end of the game, negative one. And before hidden traits are revealed, you can discard this TV dinner to swap your revealed trait with your hidden trait. Ooh, that's actually kind of useful. Maybe he'll take that one. And he'll place this one down here. Now, if this guy doesn't like what's on the food pyramid table, he can instead choose to do something else. For instance, he could choose to get rid of these leftovers here by discarding them, putting a new one of these guys out, and then he'll get to take one of these uh, action cards here and put it in his hand. That's $10, so he can utilize that to get anything he wants next turn that's worth 10 or less. But you can also add up the monies for that. And the game is going to continue. It has a tableau management style appeal, along with specific, uh, of the specific ones of these guys having abilities that you can discard them or they do something when you purchase them. Of course, they're point values. And at the end of the game, it's just going to continue to go until... Uh, uh, this deck has emptied, and then you're going to reveal your hidden traits. Add double points for here if you got this ability, uh, this one, uh, single points for this if you got this one. And uh, that, that's pretty much basically the idea of the game. Uh, of course, there's these guys here, which uh, there's certain uh, action cards in here that will say that you have to baconize something, bacon wrapped. Uh, if you somebody plays this card, he can put it on one of these guys on the ta table, and that will actually negate the ability for him to purchase it, as well as to roll the die. The only way you can get it is by bacon. So if somebody wants something very specific, but you don't want it, you can make sure they don't get it by having that happen. Unless you're this character who actually rolls bacon every single time for some reason. That's the basic idea of the game. All right, let's come up and talk about it. Now, just before we get into cat, well, just before we get into the review, let's talk a little bit about caveats. They actually made this little dumpster thing here, which is pretty cool. When you go ahead and discard a card from the pyramid, you just throw it in here, and that's basically the discard area. It's not needed, but it's pretty cool, and I like that little aspect of the game. The game is a basic luck die rolling style game. However, you have the ability to purchase things with money, and if you want to rely on this with dying, die rolling less, then you can choose to start discarding from the pyramid and drawing new cards. They'll give you specific actions, as well as money, which will allow you to purchase the exact foods that you need. Uh, but nevertheless, there is quite a bit of luck in this game. I enjoyed this quite profusely. There's one person at the table who did not like it because of the amount of luck they were not getting with the die. Rolling bacon is always going to be very beneficial in this game, and if you don't like the fact that there's luck in this game, you're probably not going to enjoy it if you don't like the die rolling aspect. But for me, I didn't mind it whatsoever, and there's quite a lot of cards in, in the game that are going to have different uh, symbols on them. So you're always, when you roll something, I don't know, you roll grain here, in these four cards, and there's going to be six on the pyramid, there's two that have grain on them, so it's very likely you're going to get something on that pyramid. It just might not be the thing you want, but luckily you have the choice, like I said, to spend money. All the artwork's fine. It's it's cute, and it's kind of like quirky artwork, in fact. It's basically just like... It makes me hungry every single time I look at this game. All the bacon wrap stuff and the uh, macaroni. It's got all these different... It's got gluten-free stuff like that, and of course, like watermelon tomato salad. So no matter what, it's going to work with the objectives. The objectives give it a nice twist as well, and it adds more strategy. You know what people's visible objective is, and you don't know what their hidden objective is, but you know the type of food they're buying. If for some reason you never see them buying meat, that's probably because they don't want it, nor do they need it. And so making sure you don't place a bacon wrap card on a meat card would probably be 
a good idea for certain players. Now, the more players you get in the game, the more hectic it's going to be, and the more unlikely you're going to know what every single buddy's ability is. And it becomes more of a, you need to do the best you can do for yourself. But with less players, it's going to be more of all involved around getting what you want and also making sure your opponent does not get what they need. They've incorporated a lot of additional extra stuff, which is just kind of cool. I like the fact they had a little lunch tray for the first player. And like I said before, the trash can, which fits nicely with the box, makes you feel like it's more thematic. You just feel like you're eating and eating and eating. It reminds me of uh, the... Oh, that pa the Pasadores game where you're just eating a bunch of uh, stuff from the the restaurant. I can't remember what it's called now, but it's just as fun as that game. It's a light game. It's a filler game, and it doesn't take up too much table space. It's something you can pretty much play anywhere you want in, in, in a dining environment. Is what I would kind of recommend. Uh, but like I said luck is involved so that's probably something you have to think about and uh, there's, there's there is a certain amount of strategy in it that will uh, entice the strategic gamers uh, i would suggest checking this game out i had a lot of fun with it it's what's for dinner and it's currently on kickstarter in the description below check it out all right guys thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer kickstarter card game review if you like this game go ahead and check out the rest of our videos here on youtube like subscribe and comment it all does help we do greatly appreciate it as well as checking out what's for dinner description below this is already making me hungry i want to make myself some macaroni and cheese right now with bacon bits all right also go ahead and check out our website unfilteredgamer.com we have tons of blog posts giveaways, giveaways kickstarter lists and more and our friends at bigboardgames.com and the giveaway geek do go ahead and check them out they got some great stuff on there all right guys that's all i got for you this time and as always i look forward to uh i look forward to eating some bacon right now <laughs>